just doesn't make any sense and it definitely causes more harm than good based on my own experience. That's why I'm aiming this lesson not only at learners but also at teachers. I know not everybody is going to believe me or like what I have to say in this video. Plenty of experience of helping English learners just like you to improve both their listening and their speaking skills by fixing what we're going to talk about in this lesson. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Josh. I've taught thousands of one-on-one -on -one lessons to learners just like you. And this is English Hacks Pronunciation, where I help you to sound like a native if you want and to understand real, natural American speech as it is, not as it's prescribed in academia or in theory. Because unfortunately, sometimes even if those things match up, the way that things are taught actually cause problems for you as an English learner because of the way that English works. Now the very first thing that we have to understand about vowel length before we talk about anything else, vowel length in English is not phonemic. What does that mean? It means that there is no difference in meaning, there's no change in meaning based on vowel length. In some languages, if you say e or you say e, there's actually a change in the meaning of that word that doesn't exist in English. I'm sure that all or most of you already know that, but just so we're on the same page, we need to get that out of the way first. The main thing we're gonna focus on today is, does vowel length actually exist in English? And if it does exist, does it matter? Now there are two ways that this concept of vowel length is applied to things in English. One is with the naming of letters. So for example, E is the long E and E is the short E. The second way that vowel length is applied as a concept is in the difference between kit versus kid, where you have maybe the same vowel, but the consonant after, if it's voiced or voiceless, will actually change the length of the vowel. But we're gonna come back to that. First, let's take a more in-depth look at the first type. So when we're talking about the long E and the short E, E and E, the letter E is commonly used to represent both sounds. So, okay, we call one long, we call one short. Same thing with the long I, the short I, the long A, the short A, et cetera, et cetera. If nothing else, it gives you the benefit of being able to label these sounds and categorize them to understand what's going on better. But there's a couple problems with this. Number one, a symbol is not a sound. So it doesn't matter if it's an English letter, if it's an IPA letter, if we're talking about Spanish, which has a phonetic script, you wanna focus on your ears, not your eyes, because when we're talking about pronunciation, when we're talking about improving your listening and your speech, sounds are auditory. They do not use your eyes. Now the second reason why this is a problem, calling one the long E and the short E, is that they're two completely different sounds. One is E, one is E, one is I, one is E. One is A, one is A. And you might say, well, we're splitting hairs, who really cares? But this also goes against the stress and rhythm of the language. It's just not an accurate concept based on the way the language works. I can't tell you how many times I've had students come to me and I start testing their sounds to see what we have to work on. And I say, okay, pronounce the vowel sound in this word. And they say, E. Then I say, pronounce the vowel sound in this word and they say, eh, eh. That's not the sound, the sound is eh, and you can make it really short and quiet like that, eh. So for example, if eh is in an unstressed syllable, English is a stress-timed language, so an unstressed syllable is going to be shorter and quieter, eh. If eh is in a stressed syllable, stress syllables are louder and longer. So that same eh sound is gonna be louder and longer compared to if it were in an unstressed syllable. Eh. You can do the same thing with E. E. Take, for example, the word remove. This is usually pronounced with R. You can even maybe say it with R. That's perfectly fine as well. However, did you know that you can pronounce this RE? That's right. You can use the E vowel, the long E, in an unstressed syllable. This is actually what I would call the fully enunciated version of the word, which we just don't normally use. So it's absolutely 100% possible to say remove. 
the stress is still on that second syllable and that re is super, super short. And it's not just the word remove. Most words that start with re can follow the same pattern. Also, most words that start with d, like destroy, destroy, destroy. Even many words starting with b. If we say believe or because, it's perfectly fine. It's just usually we say believe or believe, because or because. The point is, is that just because it's a long e doesn't mean it can't be used in an unstressed syllable. Again, the relative length between stressed and unstressed is the most important thing. So the point here for this first type of vowel length, it tends to cause problems for many English learners because they try to always make you know the short one super short and you can easily break the rhythm like that. If I say set the table, you don't want to say set, set the table set the table. I'm making it nice and short. It doesn't work that way because it's a stressed syllable. Any relative difference between e and e in their length doesn't matter. Don't focus on that. That's going to cause problems with your speech. That's going to cause problems with your listening. But that brings us to the second way that this concept of vowel length tends to be used, and that's in kit versus kid. Now, this one definitely does exist. It has been scientifically and objectively proven and verified that there is a difference in vowel length for the I sound between kit and kid. But here's the thing. Do you want to know how big that difference is? It's not seconds, it's tenths of a second. Now, I don't care if you're a learner, I don't care if you're a teacher, I don't care if you have a PhD in linguistics. I want somebody to look at me with a straight face and tell me that trying to accurately and consistently produce a difference of tenths of a second will improve your speaking and or improve your listening. And I've had at least one subscriber as well as several students that when they come to me with this and they say, well, yeah, there's a difference here. And I tell them to stop focusing on that and instead focus on if it's stressed or not, their listening improves. It solves a problem that you didn't even know that you had caused by the academic concept and the way that things are taught. The point is focus on the stress, not some vowel length difference, which also is the core of the rhythm. It doesn't matter what sound you can have an E, the long E, in a stressed syllable or an unstressed syllable. You can have an E, the short I, in a unstressed syllable or in a stressed syllable. The biggest thing that determines the length isn't the sound itself, it's the stress of the syllable. And it doesn't matter any little details or technicalities, focus on what's gonna actually give you the biggest results, which is the stress consequently the rhythm. The only other thing that significantly affects the length of the vowel, regardless of what kind of vowel it is, is the speed of speech or the clarity of your speech. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about this when I talk about the range concept that's actually going to be the next lesson that you don't want to miss. The language will show you all of its secrets if you pay close attention. And one of the best ways to do that, as well as one of the best ways to improve your listening skills overall, is to listen to real English aimed at native speakers. And you can do that by signing up for a free trial for Audible where you can get up to two ebooks for free and help support the channel through the affiliate link. You can check out other English Hacks lessons that will help you not focus on the concepts, but on the reality of actual, real, natural American English speech. And I'll see you guys there in the next lesson.